Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, friends, I am delighted to welcome you to the 40th anniversary of the European Court of Auditors here in Luxembourg. And I am especially pleased to personally welcome their Royal Highnesses, Grand Duke and Grand Duchess of Luxembourg, Prime, the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, Xavier Bettel, and other high-ranking representatives of Luxembourg, uh, as well as the President of the European Parliament, Antonio Tajani, along with our key interlocutor in the Parliament, the Chair of the Budgetary Control Committee, Inge Gressler, and of course other representatives of the European Parliament. Our former colleague, Kersti Kaljulaid, the president of Estonia, who it, because in Estonia currently has the presidency, as well as the president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, uh, who is accompanied by the European Commission member responsible for the budget, Gunther Oettinger. I'd also like to welcome former president of the European Court of Audit the former presidents of the European Court of Auditors, Jovita Court Caldera, Hubert Weber, and Andre Middelhoek. Public auditing and financial accountability are very deeply rooted in the broader concept of democratic accountability. The creation of the court through the Treaty of Brussels in the 70s of la the last century shows this convergence between the requirement of independent external audits, audits and the goal of full democratic accountability. We would not be here today were it not for a determined campaign for a European audit institution. In large part, this was led by the European Parliament in an alliance with the supreme audit institutions in the member states. One particularly imposing parliamentary figure stands out from those early days, and it's Heinrich Eigner to whom I would like to pay tribute tonight. It was 40 years ago in October 1977 when the nine founding members of the court, having taken their oath of office before the Court of Justice, arrived at Rude Aldringen, offices that they had rented from the Luxembourg authorities. They had to start their work more or less from scratch and deal with numerous questions, ranging from audit work to the recruitment of staff. It was only later that the court was elevated to a European institution as we know it today. And in fact, we are just about to have the 1,072nd meeting of the Court of Auditors. Ladies and gentlemen, I speak for all members of the court when I say that I am honored that you all made it here to share this anniversary with us. This year has been a turning point for Europe. Rather than staring into the abyss, 27 European leaders gathered in Rome, reaffirming their common future. President Juncker, just one month ago, with Europe's economy finally bouncing back, provided you with a roadmap for the months and years to come. It is a bold plan. We need to be forward-looking and bold, not apologetic, in our actions. In particular, we need to be more confident in our values and confident in our potential. Debating what sort of union we want to live in is good and even essential, but perpetual self-doubt or even self-flagellation only add to the confusion felt by many citizens 
and plays directly into the hands of populists. It is only with a strong sense of purpose that the EU and its member states will be able to set the agenda worldwide, be it on trade, be it in, on climate change, be it on confronting terrorist threats or managing migration flows. Ladies and gentlemen, as president of the European Court of Auditors, I can assure you that we are determined to fully play our part, all members, in such a reinvigorated European Union. We are determined to be an independent voice capable of meeting out praise where things work, but also to highlight uncomfortable truths where things are not working properly. A former president of the European Court of Justice, Hans Kutcher, put it in an almost British sense of understatement when he swore in our first batch of members in 1977. He said, it is no secret that the activity of these bodies responsible for the supervision of budgets is not always a source of joy for those involved. However, he argues rightly that such control must be welcomed with gratitude. As Heinrich Eigner put it perfectly, the control exercised by the Court of Auditors should not be punitive, but constructive. We are determined to ensure that every euro spent every euro spent at EU level brings a clear added value. And with a potentially shrinking budget, this will no doubt be a challenge in all spending areas. We must ensure that all EU spending is accountable and independently audited. I don't think that in the long term, our citizens, businesses, and national authorities need additional budgets. The chair of the European Parliament's Committee on Budgets has described this as a galaxy of budgets. Rather, citizens expect a single, flexible, transparent budget based on the community method. We must also be in a position to make the right product available at the right time. In the last months, we have taken decisive steps to make our work program more strategic and to modernize our annual report. I also want us to better communicate our work in the media and make ourselves more understandable to our citizens. Finally, we aim to cooperate even more closely with the national supreme audit institutions and with the European Parliament, the Council, and the Commission. Let me assure you, the European Court of Auditors is not in an ivory tower, but in an open house. We are open to cooperate with you at all levels in keeping with our independence. We are open to understand differences and attempt to bridge over them. We are open to learn from others and to innovate in our daily work. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Thank you for giving us the honor today. Thank you very much.